Okay, we're back here live in New York City for a special CUBE presentation of HP Moonshot Announcement. I'm John Furrier, SiliconANGLE.com, it's theCUBE. And uh, we're going to explore and continue to do a drill down on kind of what is all this mean. Moonshot, obviously, changing the data center dynamics, changing, changing the world around computing, software, software-defined data center, and all the exciting mobile and cloud computing action. I'm John Furrier, SiliconANGLE.com. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Brian Glinsman is here from Texas Instruments. He's the Vice President and General Manager of the Processor and Embedded Processing Division of TI. Uh, Brian, welcome to theCUBE. Well, thank you, uh, Dave. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. It's an exciting day. Um, I'm, I'm really excited at what HP's done and what it opens up for the entire community. Yeah, we've been um, seeing all kinds of innovations today. I mean, this notion of you know lots of little processors and systems on a, on a, on a, on a, on a chip and, and you know, this idea of tuning the, the system for the workload as opposed to saying, okay, this is my workload, and I got to change it to, make, to match the system characteristics. Really seeing a, a sea change of, of the thinking that goes into infrastructure. So what's TI's you know, perspective on this? What's your angle on, uh, on this opportunity? Well, um, TI has historically been very strong in embedded processing where uh, large OEMs would build proprietary architecture. And by combining our technology with the Moonshot program, we enable customers to take our technology and put it into a cartridge, um, just like this, where in this cartridge, you have enough horsepower. Sure. This cartridge has the equivalent uh, horsepower of, of an SOC, but what you get out of it is you, you get 16 ARM processors and 32 DSP processors, which is enough to do, for instance, if you were thinking in media processing, it could do anywhere from 2,000 to 10,000 channels of, of converged VoIP um, in one little blade. And the power and cost and space savings is amazing. So, what, so compare it to what, what, would a, what would a conventional infrastructure take? So I've got this, this system here. What would a conventional infrastructure take to replicate what you just described? Well, well it's, it's all come a long way over the last 15 years. We've been designing SOCs and moving them up. We used to be very DSP-centric. Now we bring in all the other types of processing with ARM and packet processing. And the HP uh, Moonshot uh, infrastructure enables people to get to market very quickly with not only one device from us, but from devices from the entire ecosystem. So you can build a server that makes the most sense. In terms of what this does, typically the, the, the proprietary systems are large ATA, uh, ATCA blades that are, are custom built that consume 200 watts per blade. And while the capacity could be achieved the same as this, it's a very expensive proposition for our customers to do that. And this way, they can use a common base, and their time to market is reduced by years. So you call this Keystone, right? That's your platform? The, the SOC is Keystone, and what, what we mean by that is we designed, um, it, you know, we're on our fifth generation uh, of SOC, and what, what Keystone means to us is giving you the tool set of ARM, of DSP, of acceleration, whether it's for radio or media or packet processing, and blending it together where you can, the user, the, the end customer, can get entitlement out of the silicon. And by enabling this platform, we're opening up markets we've never seen before because those customers weren't going to build a custom server. Now, just by populating cartridge blades, they can have their choices. What markets are you opening up? Be specific, because that's really important that we've been talking earlier about mm. kind of enabling platform of this disruption? Well, sure. Um, I mean, I think the, the you, you had CG, uh, CTS or, or CTG on here. Um, you know, they do a lot of mathematical computations. And so what we're looking at here is being the math coprocessor, but easy to use. And what that enables is they, they can do, whether it's in a small truck or whether it's in, in a large farm, far more computations per watt, far more computations by per square meter of floor space and it enables them to go. Other areas that we've seen a lot of traction, we've seen a lot of traction in financial data modeling for Wall Street, um, in genetic mapping, genome, anything to do with high performance. So compute. when you say new markets, you mean that you're enabling the customers because of the footprint and the cost savings on the energy to get more servers, thus they can do more relative to their app, whatever that app is, in, in that case it's computation, uh, farm, or if it's, whether it's real-time transactions, whatnot, right? Sure, I mean, in the day of a generic server, um, you know, the x86 architecture has been really good and we don't see replacing that. But when you have a purpose-built server that can meet your needs, because you, you do a lot more media processing or a lot more math processing, this type of platform 
will enable you to do a, high, a far more efficient power and space and cost. Yeah, Dave and I always talk about it ever since you know we've been covering Oracle Open World now for three years going on our fourth year about purpose built as being kind of like uh, you know proprietary and, and if you if you look at it that way you can argue that here what's interesting is you have purpose built capability mm -hmm. in an open environment because you have an ecosystem you have some software programmability um, so that's kind of how we see the world going do you agree with that and if not, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, and so not the Oracle part, but the open uh, you know, yeah. comment on Oracle. So, so I, I think the yeah. open platform, um, bringing it together so you have uh, HP takes care of the infrastructure, they take care of the booting, the security, the environmentals, and now you have the ability to bring multiple cartridges of what, you, what the customer desires to make their best server, um, I, I think is a huge advantage. For my traditional customer base, what it brings is time to market reduction of two to three years because they don't need to go out and revalidate NEB standards on their hardware, reliability, it's done for them. It's like having a UL label on, on a device. Yeah, and, and it's just, it opens up to so many more smaller customers where, you know, unless you were going to be selling a billion dollars worth of product, building these type chassis is really expensive. And so now you, you've got a standards-based chassis that whether it, hopefully, it's TI, but you know whether it's one of the other eco vendors out there that enable a technology that you just, you know, the, the x86 architecture is great architecture, but there are other architectures that get you more horsepower, more performance for purposes, and and what we want to do is enable both. Now you guys have always been good at s specialized, right? I mean, you've never sort of tried to take on the well maybe, well, maybe I, the old I wouldn't days. say never yeah, yeah, we, no, we, so we did in the old days yeah yeah no, that's true and I remember I'm, <laughs> I'm old so I do remember that but then you learn your lesson I guess is the way I would say <laughs> that but the, the, no the interesting thing is you've learned how to thrive you know by by tucking into these these various places um, this moonshot uh, really opens up you know Pandora's box in a good way uh, doesn't it for, for you guys and opens up huge new markets it, it does and when you when you look at where things are going um, you know you've, you've got data manipulation but more and more um, everything's becoming about analytics whether it's analyzing user trends whether it's analyzing video whether it's analyzing voice whether it's however you want to do it and to be able to blend in large data farms with high, highly computational matrix math gives you a huge lift in what you can do I mean, if you move forward, instead of having a, a video camera that just says there's someone moving, having a video camera that says there's someone moving, they're in the 7-Eleven, they've got a hood on, they've got a metallic object in their hand, please call somebody to look at this. That, that's a huge step forward. You know, just look at, at everything we're doing, with it, whether it's around cars driving themselves, bringing all that capability into the server so that you can utilize all the specialized embedded processing Again, not just here with our cartridge, but with any cartridge. It gives you a, a, a very large base of things we've never thought of, and it ultimately will result in much better products, much lower power, much lower cost. So how, so take that example that you just gave us. Um, is that in production today? Um, no, we, we have customers working on it. It's very high end today, uh -huh. but as you start cost reducing yeah, this. Say how much does that cost? Right? <laughs> as you start cost reducing uh -huh. it, I mean, the devices that we're putting into this server um, they can take a radar map of the Earth and turn it into a video map, right? That's what we use them for. They, they, they can be used um, for a cloud RAN solution where you put the entire base station in a server. Um, it, it's a vision that people have. Um, who knows which way things go, but it enables anything to be put in a server that can be put in embedded processing. So, but, that, but coming back to that example, are we you know, five years away, 10 years away, 50 years away, not 50, of course we don't think out that far, but <laughs> within a decade um, to have the cost be at a level that is sort of consumable by you I, know, an average business? I, I think you, you we're getting very close to be consumable by the average business and, and that it, it really comes down to getting the development base out there um, and getting the ability of the developers to, you know, purpose built is a little bit harder. Um, mm -hmm. It's a smaller ecosystem. Requires some it talent. I mean, it does. Skill. But at the same time, the benefits of it are are tremendous in what you can do in a power cost area of position. So we want to do both of those. I, I don't see either one going away or winning. I, I see they're not mutually exclusive. I mean, we right. see custom definitely the way to go, but it's not necessarily purpose built in the way that people used to kick purpose built as being proprietary. I mean, even Oracle's moving to purpose built open to some extent using industry standard stuff. They got Java, so. 
you know, we see that. People want the best solution for their uh, for their offering. That's why I like the software angle on this. And I think, you know, the software developers, the LAMP stack guys and other folks out there, not the software that's on the on the devices. That still needs to be innovated, and you guys are doing that. So, you know, the, the question is, yeah, no, it's a no-brainer. Mobile is causing more action, forcing pressure on the infrastructure guys, no doubt. Um, where are we on that in terms of this kind of new hardware hitting the scene, honestly, I think it's really top of the first inning, in my opinion. Honestly, it's just shipping. Moonshot, 14 months ago, was first generation. This is the second generation. I mean, I call it first generation because it's going to have to use shipping code. Um, it's early. Mm -hmm. How much more work do you see happening quickly, and how accelerated do you think it will be? Well, I, I think, at least from the, the cartridges we're providing, what we'll see is um, the very high computational folks moving quickly because they have large teams, they have a, a big need, and, and some of these things, they, they have a power space budget of 8KW or something of that nature, and if they can triple the performance by changing a cartridge out, well, that's great. Um, so they, they've got some confines, but as we move along, I um, mean, there's no question the mobile world is bringing a lot more traffic, a lot more video, and, and a lot more analytics to the party, as well as just base stations, right? And so, all of these things could be done in a Moonshot server. Um, in, in, in many cases, I think we will start seeing them be done in Moonshot servers or, 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 or that type technology. Um, there still will be purpose-built boxes. I mean, it's a, it's a blend, obviously. That's just the way it is. I mean, I mean that's nothing wrong with having purpose-built. I mean, it happened in the mainframe days, too. Um, next five years, just your last question, just you know, more your personal perspective. Um, given the historical views you've had in the industry and now kind of where we are, we've always talked about this as an inflection point, transformation, et cetera, et cetera, you're seeing it on the consumer side now uh, in the emerging tech and enterprise, uh, up and down the stack. Next couple of years, where are the big things going to be happening in your mind, just on the general landscape of, 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 of the industry? What's, what do you see as really putting the pressure, the drivers for more change? Well, I, I think as I mentioned earlier today in the Moonshot launch, um, power consumption per function has to come down. It, 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 no matter how you achieve that, Moonshot is clearly targeted at 90%, 85% power reduction. Um, that, that has to happen because um, as you turn on more and more of the world to the things we're just used to every day, watching a YouTube video on your cell phone or whatever, the power consumptions of seven billion people do that is, is huge. So, so power is the number one thing we need to attack. Um, but you know, if you just, you know, it's kind of like telling people you, you can you can lose weight by not eating, okay, great. But <laughs> at the end of the day, yeah, you know, short that's not going to be the solution, right? So yeah. we need to figure out how to do what we're doing today at 90% less power. Or so you're saying this 99. vegan's the strategy of uh, yeah. <laughs> this is like low power? Lean and meal. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, that would, no. But Red uh, meat, you know, more just energy, protein. <laughs> No, I'm just saying. We don't want to be the Atkins diet. We're in New York. And yeah, we're in there. Yeah. We, we need to, <laughs> power is the number one way to address things. By enabling purpose built along with uh, more general purpose servers, you'll see the power hungry applications moving to purpose built to save the power and to enable um, a broader ecosystem that, that gets us there quickly. I think it's an exciting time uh, in the industry. Uh, Brian, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Uh, we'll be right back. This is theCUBE here live in New York City for a special presentation of theCUBE. Extracting the signal from the noise at HP Moonshot's big announcement here, changing the game in the data center, cloud mobile social, um, great en low energy, high performance. Uh, here's theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. <laughs>